Greetings everybody, my name is Boba Joe Carrera, I'm based in Texas here. I build say numbers for a living and I've been introduced to come on to this page and do some of my live streams here for y'all. Now I usually do this on Lord Beerus, that's Facebook slash Lord Destructor, and you can catch all kinds of videos of me building Saiyan armors, uh, so I'm really excited to be here. I wanted to introduce myself and I figured what else the best way other than just starting armor from scratch from the very beginning. A little back about my history, I've been doing this over four years and I grew up restoring classic cars and building stuff like that. It was a lot of fun, so I, I kind of grew up in an artistic form. Now, I started the Saiyan Armor four years ago, and I've been doing this full-time, non-stop. I've only had about two vacations in about four years. So, it's a lot of, lot of dedication, a lot of passion, a lot of people getting Saiyan Armors around this planet. It's, just, it's been a, a blessing and just an honor to do that. I'm a major Dragon Ball fan, and I've been a Dragon Ball fan since the day it hit the States. Um, I absolutely just, oh, you know, just like you. I love Dragon Ball, you love Dragon Ball, you know how it is. There is that camaraderie between us. There is that fandom source, that brotherhood that we share together and that's what fuels my passion here. So today, I'm gonna to be building one of these. This is my, my new version of the Cell Saga and I drew some lines on it today. This is actually the first time I put lines on my armors. And let me show you what I normally have here doesn't have the lines, so I was like, oh, let me try this. Let me try to make it just a little more animated. I kind of like it, to be honest. Um, but this is what we're gonna be assembling today, and it consists, I'm gonna show you all the little pieces that come together for this. So basically, we have the chest here, which is two sections. This bottom section is gonna be made of one, two, three sections in the front. And in the back side, we have two plates, this plate and this plate. They have to be shaped a certain way to get this nice contour here. If you were just to cut it flat, you'd have more of a flat surface, so nobody likes that. My armors are contoured for the body. Um, now they're super flexible, you can bend these things day and night, but they're not stretchy like the anime. We don't really have anything quite like that in existence. I mean, we have neoprene and, and spandex. You can create a suit from that, but for me to tailor suits over and over again at the rate I have to, this is the best material that I have found over the years to really work with, and it's just done me so well. Uh, and this is being created from EVA foam. Uh, it's a hot, basically floor mats. It's what I'm standing on right now. It's what you roll around on in a gym. Here's another version. As you can see, it's, it's got a hole in it. If you remember when Cell did the little <laughs> blew the hole through trunks, this is what we have right here. Now, I don't do any of this till that's completely clean and then I'll do it. I'm not really doing any battle damage, but I definitely will be doing battle damage on this page very soon. If you do wanna watch any of my older videos, like I said at the beginning, go ahead and check out facebook.com slash Lord Destructor. That's Lord Beerus. I normally do my live streams there, but I've been introduced to this place, and so far it sounds pretty cool. Uh, I'm looking forward to make some armors for you guys and just show you the techniques that I use on a daily basis, and it, I hope it helps you, and if it does, that's that's a, a mission complete for me. So um, let me check the comments real quick. Karen, how you doing? Um, Curry, can't, can't pronounce your name. Tyler, Godzilla shirt, you know it. In fact, this is my favorite Godzilla movie, Biolanti. If you ever watch Godzilla vs. Biolanti, it's right after Godzilla 1984. Great movie, the soundtrack is groovy. Okay, so back behind me. I have barred shoe glue. This is my connector. This is what brings things together. Um, here's a little jig that I create to cut my trim to make the round parts on here. We'll be getting into this a little bit later. Also have a roller. You have to have a roller. A straight roller really helps. I have a, a wood and a metal roller. This comes into play when I have to make sharp cuts. Um, a heat gun is crucial. You gotta have a heat gun. Back here on my hook, I'm gonna break this out. It is my Dremel tool. And on my Dremel tool, I have a snake end here, so it's very flexible for me to work with. And on the end, I have a drum sander with a 120 grit uh, sand drum on it. I don't know what to really call that. Anyways, this is what bevels and cleans up my edges, so I have nice con uh, convexes, and when things come together, they're nice and clean. We're gonna set the Dremel aside right now. 
right here I have my patterns. These are all my patterns. I hand cut these. I don't use computer. I don't use it. I do everything by the old hand and uh, shaping. Give you another example. This is done by hand. Everything that I've created on this Android 16 uh, is sculpted with, with hand. It, I can't tell you how hard it was to get this. To get that shape, like Android 16, it's not round. If you know Android, he has more of a, uh, a panel here, here, and here. So getting that was really tricky. But this is my Android 16. I'm about to paint oh, his cod piece and stuff like that that come on here and this will be flexible. Here's one of his side panels. Let's see, I got an arrow, so this goes over here. That locks into this place right there and he has flexible room. I'll, I'll probably break this out a little bit later. I, I need to do some detail work on that. So right now, let's get started. We're gonna make a cell saga. One of those right there. So first thing I'm gonna break out, and there's, there's many different types of mediums I do work with. For the high-end premium sets, I use this stuff right here. This is from TNT Cosplay Supply. They're based in Texas. That's TNTCosplaySupply.com. And if you go to them, make sure you say Boba Joe sent you. And uh, it comes in rolls, much like this. This is really strong stuff. I really like this. It's good to use, but today we're not working with that. We're working with something else, which is still great. It's what this is made from. comes in sheets much like this. You can get these sheets online at wesellmats.com. There are two, uh, let's see, 22 inches across by 22 inches, and I can use these to sculpt out my armors if I lay my patterns out. So basically, I'm gonna go ahead and first inspect these. I wanna make sure these are clean, everything's looking great. Um, sometimes you can get little air holes or something like that. making a few sets of armor, so we're gonna be stacking up here. Let's pump them all out, shall we? Let's open up another pack. I'm probably gonna make four cell sagas, maybe a, a Nappa or two, but I have a big list of armors. I make a lot of armors, my friends. These are all going to be armors. All right. So I just want to pick out some really nice ones that I want to make this first one clean. I'm going to do a battle damage. That's good. Happy with that. And you're going to be Mr. Paintball. There. I'm going to set the ones that are just a little funky. Any kind of blemish. I'm going to set it aside. I think that was a, just a couple of bad ones. Which is pretty good. Okay, so to make a cell saga, and a couple of these are going to be tailored for clients. I have measurements over here I get. Um, we're gonna be doing a 38 inch waist on the first one. We're gonna do a 34 inch on the other, and then a 36. So those are the sizes I'm gonna tailor today in cell sagas. Frederick, awesome work. Thank you very much, Mr. Smith. Joseph, you want one? Yes, I do sell these, so if you want my custom size for you, um, that's what I do. I do it all the time. So let's go ahead. These are my good Sharpies. Make sure I grab the right one. I'm gonna lay out my front pattern first. So, the front's this and not that. This. So I have my chest pattern, I have my kidney pattern, and I have my abdominal pattern. Now these variate for people as far as chest width, chest height, 
and stuff like that. When you when I ask people to measure, it's very crucial that your arms are up like this and you measure from this point to this point. This is gonna let me know how wide to make this armor. Also, when you stand and bend over, you don't want this too high or uh, it's gonna knock into your neck. So you want this here to be right about this area right here. So there's plenty of room to kind of move around and it looks more correct that way. You wanna have your collarbone exposed. Um, another thing I ask people to measure are their chest uh, circumference, abdominal circumference, and waist circumference. This gives me this measurement, this one, and this one. It's crucial to know that. Also the back side, you gotta know from neck to back line, but normally I do tilt these. They're a little bit of an angle there, and try and keep these lines just right. Um, kinda, yeah, that's what it is. So right now I have a certain set of measurements, I'm gonna cut three of these two. Back in the early days, my armors were just one solid piece going across this part. I changed that. I wanted more dimension with my armor, so now I made this design, which is just a lot better. A whole lot better. basically base they're cut to 35 inches so if I just trace blah, I know that's 35 inches I contour that in and out whether I want it skinnier or wider from that so I have to make a 36 I'm gonna add an inch and a half of space onto the outside. I'm gonna split that down the middle between the left and the right. So it's basically gonna be an inch and a quarter. This, or, uh, probably like a, yeah, half inch on it, both sides. You have to be careful because with EVA, there's a thickness to it. So if you do cut it at a certain length, it can be too tight because the radius of that foam condenses once you uh, wrap it. Here we go. Go ahead and get my strap out of this as well. Here 
here now. I got my line shaped out. I can go ahead and slice and getting these cut out. And then we'll move on to the heat forming. I'm gonna set this one aside. I'm gonna go ahead and get my back cut as well. So now, let's bring out the back sections. Here's my back pattern. But once you bend it like this, that contour, this shape like this becomes the, the means of this creating the convex here. So it's not straight, it has a nice contour. And you feel that when you put it on, it hugs the lower back. It keeps you standing up straight, which is very important. I especially need that because I'm hunched over all the time over this table. Things can get a little tight. So let's go ahead and just double check this measurement. Reference 
what I can do is just take my stick and kind of move it over here, down, and just put it one, three, four. That's gonna help me keep leveled over to this side. I'll do a inches down. This is going to help me know. Get this up closer so you can see. Because I got to trace this line across here. So that line meets up with that dot. Connecting a dot and then moving on, making sure those dots line up and then getting that trace down. Nothing too tricky. It's just how it's done here. both these ready to cut. I'm going to go ahead and let's do that. We're going to do a uh, focus on this cell saga. We'll get these cut out. We'll do some heat forming. I got a lot to build today, so I'm going to have to start cutting those, but I try to keep my live feeds to around an hour, nothing too crazy. So let's go ahead and get this here rocking. I'm going to begin cutting out this what I just traced. So I have an extremely sharp blade. Okay. This right here is Ofa. This is from Japan, really solid steel. And if you want something that cuts extremely well, go get yourself one of these and get a sharpening stone so you can keep it very sharp as you move along. It is so crucial to have a clean cut. Nothing dull, very clean cut. And I'll give you an example right now. Just like butter. That's the finish I want in my slice. A perfect, clean cut. Not all pulled away or ugly or, you know what I mean. So I'm keeping myself extremely planted and I lock down and when I move, I'm just being really, really mechanical with it because you don't want to mess around with blades. It will cut your fingers off with great ease. So when I'm slicing, I am not messing around. I'm focused on that cut. Perfect slice. Don't use a heated blade. They're useless. Never use a heated blade. You will leave it plugged in, forget it's on, waste electricity, and burn yourself over and over again. Get yourself a Japanese high quality blade. I can't express that enough for you. But at the same time, respect it. Don't play around with it. It will cut you so bad. I've had some pretty serious cuts over the years, so safety first, my friends. If you're not 18, ask your parents for help before messing with this. Nice clean cuts, getting all my pieces made. section. Let's go ahead and we'll set this just right aside. And we're going to cut out this. Notice this is a, a bit of a curve right there. That's what we want. And what I want to do, before I go ahead and go too far into this, where did I throw that piece at? Got that. That's very crucial. What I just did right there. Now we'll show you what that is. What 
once I cut this out. slices I kind of cut in and then back that gives me a very sharp edge here that's just perfect that's what I want okay I added that middle line that little line is so crucial it may seem so tiny but I, I guarantee you my friends I need that little line because I want to make sure that's centered much like that if this goes over here we got to make sure that stays stay centered so I have some scrap pieces here left over. I saved these just in case, you know, it could be a little piece or something for future projects. Uh, Cause I don't just build sand over, I do a lot of movie props as well. So it's good just to have a surplus of scrap pieces you can work with. All right, let's get this front cut out. Get the chest first. Very firm cuts. There we go, there's our chest piece. Very, very clean slices, it's very important. Now I'm gonna be beveling this with the Dremel here shortly. Um, yeah, there we are, we got our chest. The other piece is cut. Get this one right here. We are not ready to glue. First phase is complete. We got the lines traced. We got all the pieces here cut. Now we gotta go through and bevel the pieces and uh, make them ready to go together. 
So I'm going to break out my Dremel right now. What I'm going to do is basically where this panel connects to this one, i got to make sure that edge is kind of contoured a little bit. It has a little bit of a contour in this one as well. Across the abs here and up here. Bottom side of the chest as well. So there's the bevel. We're going to do that. I'm going to break out my Dremel tool here. It is loud. It's going to get a little bit of a ee going on, so sorry about that. But at the same time, I'm not. Here we go. Here's the first chest up. That beveled edge right there. you my friends to try this at home but be responsible about how you do it. Um, anything you see doing here you can do as well my friends. It's just practice. You can be an artist. You can create things you want to create. You have the power my friends. You have the power! You can be the champion of the whole world. Oh yeah. Everybody loves the champion. Well, I mean, uh, everybody likes the champion, right? I mean, we're, I'm, the, I'm the savior of the world. You can call me Mr. Saint. <laughs> now, I know you all think Goku is really the big time. He always likes to take the credit. We all know that I'm a true champion of the world. I'm working some edges here, got some nice things happening. Ding, ding, ding. Bevel the top edge here. Ah, uh, detail work. All kinds of little details like this. Not that. That detail. I mean, if you look at like a Halo set of armor, there's all kinds of details on that. This is pretty simplistic. Bevel planes, I get this side right here. So what I usually do is lock it right in my arm like this. That helps me just slow this out.
I always go one way, and I go back the other way then. Together, I like to go over it and just rough it up a little bit. Just so the, the glue really bites down a little bit better. Because my blade makes it a really clean cut, and if it's too clean, uh, you can't go too clean, but it just it promotes the adhesion having a nice rough edge. Let me draw it here. Just rough it up a little bit, nothing crazy. Real light, real light. Boom, boom, boom. Just hanging across. Okay, now work this chest a little bit better here. I can't be uh, drinking on any other cup wearing this shirt than my Corky Zilla shirt. There's, there's my Corky. Oh, nothing like Colombian beans in the afternoon. How are you guys doing? Where are you watching from? I'm gonna look at the comments real quick. Take a little break as my hand's kind of vibrating from that dremeling. Let me know where you're from. Where are you watching? What made you fall in love with Dragon Ball Z? Throw in the comments below. I guarantee I'll look over the comments after the feed. Uh, Moving along, I got a lot of things moving here. I got a lot of armors in process. I have this custom job right here, which is almost like a mandolin. Here's one in a complete raw form. This is kind of where we're moving to right now. This is this is a small armor. This is the extra small set of armor, which is. Uh, You know, much smaller than this one here as far as diameter and stuff like that. But this client came over yesterday and he got tailored in person. You can see every panel of this. When you look, look, watch the lighting hit it. It's important to see that, that this is convex. This is convex. Everything I do, every panel gets uh, pushed into a bowl and gets a, a real strong. We got Dave from the UK, Adam from Pittsburgh. I think Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Very cool, my friend. Maybe you're a Steelers fan, I don't know if you are. Pittsburgh Steelers. Oh, feels good to get that part done. Okay, so, got these finished. And we're ready to heat form. Before I do that though, oh yes. This here. Here's the app plate. Now, as you can see with this one, uh, it's, it's contoured. You can see I, there's actual plating there not just you know uh, lines or anything now to get those installed level I got to make sure I trace out some lines right here just so I keep myself balanced and nothing ends up all wonky and stuff like that so having having traced lines 
It's, it's a muy bueno, my friend. Corpus Christi, Texas. We are just down south, my friend. Jose, Florida. I have a lot of family in Florida. I like visiting Florida. Very nice. Very nice. Thank you guys for joining. I, I really appreciate your shares, your likes. It means so much to me. Um, this is my first time going live here. So, you know, I'm always a little nervous coming to a new page like this, but yo, look really great. I've been watching the page for a while. I've been on Adamant for a long, you know, quite some time, but I don't really like to move into a place. Uh, like I said, I've been doing live streams. You can hashtag Saiyan Armor or Boba Joe, and you will watch all of my videos that I've made over the years. They're on Lord Beerus, uh, which is Facebook slash Lord Destructor. It's the biggest Beerus page uh, on the internet, so you can't go wrong there. Um, and go ahead, go back in all my old videos. I mean, I got videos back to where my hair was all crazy and spiky. I'm like, I'm a saying. <laughs> so go ahead and check those out. Um, you can see all the different processes. If you want to see like battle damage, I have plenty of battle damage videos that I've done live. I got some streams that are like three hours long, just working on stuff. So go ahead and check them out, my friends. Uh, and let me know if you have any questions about anything you see here. I am. I do this here because I want people to see the just the techniques that are involved with this. And if you know Bob Ross, I love Bob Ross. And as a child, I watched him faithfully all the time. Okay? He said, I can't go like this with my marker, it doesn't really work. Bob Ross, he taught a lot of people a special art, it's an Italian technique of oil painting, which is kind of a fast paced painting process but it creates an amazing painting so quickly. And so, doing these live streams, my mission is, I hope that I can just show something uh, and it, it inspires you to do something. I invite you, my friends, to go get some EVA foam and try doing this, making yourself a set of armor. It's a lot of fun. But if you just don't have the time, you don't have the patience, or you know, you're just so busy, or maybe you're just not artistic, you're just, you know, it's not for everybody, you got me! I build them for people. <laughs> yeah, I, I love doing this. I've been in touch with Toei Animation, Funimation, and as long as I don't stick their name on it, I'm good. They gave me their blessing years ago. Uh, Toei Animation, I reached out to them about four years ago, and I'm like, hey, I'm making Saiyan Armor, and I plan to do this for a living. And this was before Super was coming out, and they were just like, that's amazing. We love that you do this. Uh, we wish that you could come over to Japan, but I don't know Japanese. I, pr I should probably watch more, uh, you know, anime, not dub, so I can really understand it more. But, uh, it's one of the things, I, I feel very blessed because of that, and I'm very honored as well. There we go, I got my, my leveling lines and all. Of course, they're not gonna be this small. Like I said, it's just to keep myself knowing that each plate I put up is gonna be the right level. It's not gonna be by the end down here, it's pointing up that way. I want them nice and straight across. Very crucial. I, I love symmetrical things. <laughs> all right, so enough chit chat, my friends. Let's get into some deep for me. I'm gonna keep pouring the uh, chest first and, hmm, yeah, this used to be a big secret I never shared, but these are what I use to shape my chest. Bowl number one. Whoa, the convex is kind of wide, but it has that nice round shape. Bowl number two is much more radical. You gotta go bowl number one to get your right shape and slam it into bowl number two to get the good curve that's actually gonna stay there when I pull it out. Don't even. Okay, so anyways, cutting the chest in half. Oh lordy. That just went mass erosion. So, I have now sliced my chest in half. Um, mm, actually, oh, there is this another pro, there's another step. I, I, I lately have been adding it in, and it's actually beveling in between here. So that way, instead of this just being flat, it actually will land like this. Now once these chests become round, that curve just looks beautiful. So I'm gonna go ahead and do it. I'm gonna go ahead and bevel those really quick. Something new, you know, I'm always trying to improve. After making 900 sets, it's either go crazy or make something new, so. 
I'm gonna go ahead and hit my bevel on this chest, but I'm gonna tilt it this way a little bit. Just so slightly, nothing crazy. Because I'm doubling it up with the other side. I don't want it like this. I want it uh, just a very subtle. So just lightly, evenly as well. Now, of course, they have table sanders. You can push it across, but there's nothing like the sense and feel of this against this pump to make sure I'm pressing them accurately. Very light, my Very light. Absolutely. A lot of this is muscle memory as well, knowing this is just where this lands and this is just where this lands on my body. Very, very likely not be crazy. And this way. And there we go. See that? Very slight. I don't want anything too radical. Just, just so, just so, my friends. And that will show in the end. And that's what gives this just that little bit more of a curve going into that shape right there. Now you can see the patterns on the inside. This branching out to here, going down here and here. I don't mind showing you guys my secrets. There's nothing wrong with that. A lot of artists be like, oh, what secret? This is my secret. Yeah, it's okay, you can have that. Now, I've made 900 of these. I'm not sweating. Good. I. Is anybody else in this world gonna make over 900 sets of Saiyan armor? I'm surely not gonna worry about that. Okay, I'm already there, my friend, so. But I do hope, I really hope somebody surpasses that number one day because there's gotta be a fan crazy like that, like me. I hope I'm not the only one. <laughs> I really don't, because then I'm just maybe just. Well, if you ever watched that movie, Fear and Loathing Las Vegas, and there's that girl who paints a bunch of Barbara Streisand photos, All right, so we're gonna kick on this heat gun. We're gonna start heating things up. Shaking things around, getting things not flat. We hate flat here. I want curve. You know what I'm saying? Some nice roundy round shapes. So I have my two bowls right here. Here's the chest, left and the right. Here's my heat gun, all the way up, super hot. It's blowing out like 600 degree air. I don't know if you guys can see the red in there, but it's super hot. You can see it, it's smoking. It's not smoking, it So anyways, what I'm gonna do is just get this super hot. I'm just gonna lay into it with this heat. Let it absorb the heat, not just glance the top. Absorb the heat. Let the foam become malleable, it become flexible. Uh, it will retain the shape much better, so getting it super, super hot. Super, super hot. Dragon Ball Super Hot! Oh yeah! Alright, so once it gets floppy, it's not quite floppy yet, I want more floppiness going on here, so that nice and hot. Pushing it, bowl number one. It's taking a round shape. I like it. Okay, so now this bowl, I'm just moving it around. Like, hey, you want to bend that way, my friend, because you're going inside this bowl. Ugh. Much tighter finish, and it's only because I use this bowl that it's fitting in this one. If I didn't do that bowl first, this would be like, oh, whoa, 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 like that. That's no good. I just went, oh, uh -huh, like that, you know? See how the foam's done? It's pinching a little bit, and I'll tell you the hardest part is that little piece right there. That wants to ripple up, so. Massage this around, I'm gonna pop it out, take it back in, but I'm only gonna work this lower edge. Keep this off the rim. Let it cool. And what's gonna happen? 
what's gonna happen, my friends? We're gonna get a shape like this. Okay, see where I'm going at? We went from this flat to the curve. But it's only that I have this shape right that I get this nice convex here, which fits the booby just right. All right, so we're gonna keep this one up and do the exact same thing. And it's super hot. Like I say, you gotta soak it in, my friend. You just don't wanna, like, burn the outside of it. You gotta get it, like, super hot. But not, like, burning. If you start charring the outside, you're going too slow, you're too close. Keep it about six inches away, but move it back and forth in a way where it really wants to absorb that heat. He's gonna penetrate down into the center of that foam because you want the core to be flexible. And then it's actually gonna truly take that shape that you want. So I feel like I can feel it that it's getting flexible. I'm really happy with it. So, bowl number one. Bowl number one. Feeling good, my friend? You like that? Does that feel nice? You're bending good. All right, get in there. Just like that. You have to be fast. When I do that, I'm like, whoosh. And I, I kind of hit with my fingers spread out like that, boom, and it locks it in place. Got a little aggressive there, sorry about that. Don't you want to go to your home? Don't you want to go home? flat it's want to go ahead and keep that. Gotta have that my friends, gotta have that. Let's start heat forming the ab plate now. And for that I'm gonna need my, where did I put it? Oh there it is. I have a special dish over on the other side of my studio here. I'm gonna show you what happens as well if my camera can catch that. You see what it does it kind of melts the, the outer surface. This is called a closed cell foam. So when you hit it like this, the cells melt down to the next layer. You're, you're just cooking it down. So what I'm doing here is just letting it absorb the heat. Get it hot. Both sides, you gotta go to the front, move to the back as well. Again, my friends, I appreciate your like, your share, your comments, they all mean so much to me. Thank you for joining on my very first live feed here on uh, Super. Super Duper. We got a hot food. Let's put it in the magic wok. Put it in the wok and you do a little shine like this. Gotta stir it around, and yes, you have to do this. I like moving it around like that. Really working these shapes. Pull some air on there. Around some more. Look at this edge. That edge. What I'm doing, I'm pressing the EVA at the same time. Working it, helping all those cells kind of work to, you know, take that shape. Come on. Look at that. It's got a, a convex to it. That's going to retain that shape. It's almost like the egg effect. Eggshell effect. You stand on a bunch of eggs, they might not crack because they got that curve action going on. Same with this. I want it to take that shape. Moving across the metal, it's gonna help cool it. All right, we'll go ahead and twist like this. So now, I've created this dome shape. There you can see it. It's like the satellite there. It's got a convex this way and that way. And that creates that pop. It wants to come back to that shape. So I'm, I'm happy with that. That's gonna cool, it's gonna 
It's gonna take that shape. You know, if I want, you can sit there, I can sit here for minutes on end, just going like this, and it'll help cool and retaining that shape. So it's just how long I really work it. Uh, but that right there is good enough to get what I need. So, set that right there. Everything's getting curved here. Here's a kidney plate, let's get this thing curved. So, break out the heat gun. Let's see if you guys, all right, watch this as it moves along. See as it melts that, that outer layer. Your hair blow dryer will not do that, my friends. You gotta have something that puts out a ton of heat like this. I use a Wagner heat gun. It produces about 600 degrees of uh, air that comes out and I absorb it into this foam here, just back and forth. I don't wanna move too slow or go too, too, uh, or, or too slow or too close. It will burn the foam. And then I'm in trouble. That'll ruin the finish on the outside. So, going over this. Starting to get hot, starting to get flexible. I know it's gonna retain the shape. All right, so this. Do a little curve like that, and it's the same thing. Goes in the bowl. I'm creating a convex on every single part. Now with this one, it's a little different as well. I'm gonna use my table corner to do some stretching right here. So, pull this down. Stretching out that area right there. Go back in the bowl. Curve it like that. Make a little tube like this. Just kind of work it. Pop this out. Okay, there we go. There's a side panel. want that to have that convex right here. That's important to have this. I stretch it out over the end of my table. That's good. Move on to the other side. Show this reflection so you guys can see that it's again. As it melts away. So to blow away from your face so you're not like breathing in this stuff. Because when you go over with heat, it's also expelling a bunch of uh, chemicals and stuff. making multiple sets at once, uh, basically I would trace every set of armor, cut every set of armor, heat, uh, dremel every set of armor, heat form every set of armor, and glue at the same time. So imagine this times like five. Uh, now when I first started out doing this, I used to put out 20 to 30 sets a, a month. Okay, so 20, 30 saying sets a month by myself, I, I've never had any help. I've always worked alone. I've made every set by myself. Uh, I've had people try and help me, but they just weren't artists. They couldn't create the pieces correctly. So I was like, well, I'm just the lone wolfing it. And that's what I've been doing for four years. And I'm really proud of that. Here's our back. We got our upper back section. So this is too flat, too flat. We gotta put some, some shape into this, some life.
Again, watch how I do it, and this is going to give me my shoulder blades. Um, look at my armor is the back. You can actually see the shoulder blades are shaped out. Maybe you see the shadowing right there, it kind of whites out. Uh, I get that by rounding around my table corner. So first thing, roll it. Roll it. Last spot here. it over it. That gives you the shoulder blade spots and it feels so good when it's done. You can really tell when you do this to a set. That's what I want when I have those shoulder blades just worked into that area. And with the, when you get around your back you can feel that it's kind of it moves nicely in that area. memory so I know how to move things around over time it just comes naturally okay I'm gonna put these lines in here let's get the back done we're getting close we're getting close to sticking this all together so close my friends steady do all of this. Now, what's next? Glue. We gotta get it all together. First step, get these chest locked together. Make a solid chest piece. So I break out large shoe glue, if you can get it where you can get it. 
Uh, I get mine from eBay. It's good stuff. It's shoe glue. It's really flexible, but when it dries, it retains its flexibility. It's rubber. Rubber cement. Rubber cement on steroids. Something very clean about this part. apply a good amount of glue on there. Nothing too, I don't want to have it where there's hardly any glue there. I put a hefty amount on so it has a good still drying. You see that wetness going on? I don't want that. Because if I put it together and it's wet, it'll end up pulling apart and that's no bueno. It's not gonna, it's not gonna work that well. Um, so it's important to give yourself enough time just to kind of relax, let things cure up, and 
and dry, I guarantee you're gonna like the results much better. Sorry about the camera, just from there. Oh, I gotta get this in a frame. The true champion signed this for me. He's a real jump. He also taught me how to speak like uh, Mr. Satan. I went to his class. Uh, I got to do voice recording in Octatron where they do the voice recording of Dragon Ball Super on uh, Dragon Ball. So it was really cool to hang out with Chris. Really cool guy. He's taught me a ton of stuff just in a matter of a couple weeks. I mean, this guy just fed so much information into me just how to become a voice actor, how to become an actor, how to really bring yourself out in the world and do that. So Chris Rager, the voice actor of um, Mr. Satan. A real pro. I got Boo, and of course I got my Chris Sabat. Chris Sabat's a good friend of mine, and also Eric Vale, who is Trunks. Um, he does film works, and he did film work with uh, my uncle-in-law, which is pretty cool. Uh, we're all connected. My uncle-in-law built the sets on Dragon Ball Evolution, so all the stuff you see in Dragon Ball Evolution that is good, not the shit acting, sorry for my language, but I'm sure you understand. Dragon Ball Evolution was a disaster in the acting field. But my uncle, he was on the set, or my uncle-in-law, my wife's um, uncle, he built all the sets. He's a master carpenter. He's actually helping me build the Saiyan pod that I have sitting outside right now. If you guys haven't seen that yet, I am building a one-to-one -one scale Saiyan pod. It's pretty intense. Right now, I'm just getting all the framework on the inside done. It's gonna be built just like the model kit. Uh, so that's pretty awesome. He's actually gonna be helping on that. So we have somebody from the original Dragon Ball movie set coming in to help work on the same pod, which is awesome. Uh, small world. Because like my uncle worked on the Dragon Ball movie. I work on all the Dragon Ball movies. If you guys haven't seen, they got Light of Hope. Go check out the new episode of Light of Hope and you'll see my armor cameoing in the background. You can also watch Goku with the GoPro. My armor's in the background of that. And uh, there's also this other live action Dragon Ball. It's not out yet, but I can't say anything about it. Uh, so I'm involved with almost every single live action Dragon Ball Z going on right now. Uh, how much do I charge? Well, you can click on the link in the bio up above and it'll give you all that information. Right now I do have a sale running, um, but please pay in mind, I'm one guy making all these armors and you can see how long it took just to get to this point. And that's me moving at a fairly you know, fast pace for you guys. Um, so doing that times 10, you know, I usually have like six armors I'm cycling through here. Like right now I have this guy here. We got this armor right here. We got the resurrection up back there. So I can tell you right now, my friends, it's a constant. It's a constant grind, so it takes me time to get some armors out. Right now, I have a big waiting list. I mean, I'm into 2018, um, and I've been doing this for four years, and I ain't stopped until this heart goes Pfft. So, I got a long road ahead, my friends, and I hope you guys can join in uh, for the rest of these builds. Now, if you wanna see all my older videos, go check out Lord Destructor, Lord Beerus. That's my other page. I've been doing live streams on there for a year. Uh, so that's what I'm on. Light of Hope, what is that? Light of Hope is a live action. Go on YouTube right now. You can go ahead, I I don't mind. Go check it out. It's Dragon Ball Z Light of Hope. It is a live action and it, let, let me tell you right now. I watched it through at like one o'clock in the morning. I watched it again the second day and I couldn't, I couldn't watch the screen because my emotions from what I was seeing were so right there. I mean, they nailed Robot, Underdog, they nail it. And I am so happy to have just my armor in the background of that movie because they did such a good guy. I know Kenny, the guy who plays Gohan, he worked in a movie called The Long Road Home. And it's a, it's a real story. And this is about a war in Iraq, a bunch of soldiers that didn't quite make it out. Kenny played a role in that, and I can tell you right now, from the people working on the movie set, like my father-in-law, he does big movies. He's, we, he's done Light of, um, my father-in-law has done like the Tree of Life, Idiocracy, There Will Be Blood. Uh, he's worked on a lot of Battle Angel Lita, all this other stuff. So he really, um, you know, it was, just, it was amazing. Um, I lost my train of thought right now. But uh, I can tell you right now, it's just an incredible show. They did such a good job. The emotion, um, the acting behind it, Kid Trunks, 
that actor, awesome. Kid Trunks did such a fantastic job. Uh, take a look here. My mind, like I was right in the middle of talking, I'm like, armor, I gotta get back to this. <laughs> I lost track. Let's begin assembling this together, my friends. Everything's been cut, beveled, heat formed, glued. Now it's ready to come together. What I do is line it up at the top here, get that perfect. convex here from that bevel we put in earlier. I'm so happy I did that. It just makes it that much better. So that's locked together. I'm not capable of pulling that apart. That's barred shoe glue. Next step, this is very, now the way I'm doing this is how I formulated over the years. First, the chest, now the ab. I have my center line already marked so I know exactly where to set it. What I like to do here is fold this up like so. Take this, find my center right here, and very carefully lock that in. I just kind of wiggle it right there. That's locked now. So very carefully, I keep these two separated. Lock that corner. Come back over here. Lock this corner. Very tricky to do. It's not easy. Pinching the ends, we got a good lock. There we go. Now, contour. This is heat form. It's got that good shape still there. See how it's really holding that? That's what I want. I want that convex there. Convex, 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 convex. All oh, convex. Coming together makes them all so much stronger. It's like alt. Voltron assembling, okay? Next step, side panel. This, this is, this is a pretty tricky part. I'm gonna land this in here like that, but it has to be just right. Boom, lock it. Bring that edge up, I am lightning. Convex, convex. Now, beard makes this super like shape that's never gonna do anything but stay where it needs to be. And that's what I want. This side. Center. Block it. Travel chest up. Block it, block it. Boom, okay. Now, of course, I trim up these, no, no, piece of cake, just slice it, and that rounds it up. It's good, I want enough space for my muscles. It wraps around my chest here, but this comes up to where my arm comfortably falls in that socket there. It's important to have it. This line comes up right where my chest is. That's great. That's what I want. There's our front side. Let's get the back side together. Chest is staying, got that retaining, that round shape, that's what we want, we just don't want flat. There's our back top. Back bottom. Remember that little dot I put earlier if you were with me this whole time? We're gonna connect that right now. Just right in the middle like this. Bam. 
it's locked. And roll it in. And see what happened there? Now we got a curve going on. See how these aren't really, see all that space right there? That changes once they come together. So, grabbing this and I'm pushing it into it. Just like so. Really get some pressure down on it. Now that I have this bowl shape, I could just pop, pop it like that. That's gonna squeeze this outer line together. And then pop. See that convex? Creating the, the shape, that, that curve, helps a lot. It really keeps this armor the way it needs to be shaped. So that's why that's there. So we got a front, we got a back. Now we gotta put them together, my friends. So I'm gonna pick a side. I usually do a hard set on this side and then the buckle comes onto this side. So I'm just gonna go like this, like this, and this one, and this one. together too fast or it just won't work. How y'all doing right now? Sayan, you are cool. Oh, you're, you're cooler than me, dude. All right, that's one thing. Just because I make Saiyan armors doesn't mean I, I'm entitled or anything like that, okay? You guys are way cooler than I could ever be as a fan because they're just sitting here watching this. So I love Dragon Ball Z. From the deepest part of my heart, I love Dragon Ball. And I love everybody who loves Dragon Ball. So anytime I meet like Dragon Ball fans, man, I love giving Dragon Ball fans the hugs. Be like, what's up, boy? What's up? How you doing? How's Goku doing this week? Oh, still shitty? All right, cool. <laughs> Sorry about the language. Shoot, Goku right now. I just want to be like, 
Stop trying to pick fights. We know you're strong. Big deal. Just come on. You just... This whole tournament's Goku's fault. You know, we all know that. And I know that Vegeta's eventually gonna be power, like, hopefully. Please, Akira, make Vegeta stronger than Goku. If you're listening, please. I think that's what's needed here. So then, like, he can just be like, stop being a child, Goku. And then Vegeta, you know, he's been so centered lately. He's blew, he blew up Master Kai's castle. I mean, he's really strong, so. I'm waiting for that, and I really hope they move that direction. Uh, I think I put my website in the bio, but it's intergalactic-creations.com. Intergalactic-creations.com. That's my little website, and I do sell armors on that, but I do have a waiting list. Again, I'm one person making all these. It takes me a little while to get them processed. I haven't showed you guys this up close yet, so let's go ahead and do that while it's still drying. This is the Resurrection F Frieza armor. There we have this convex here. Everything's ship-shaped. Uh, I can do the logo here, so I have done this hundreds of times. Pop, wah, pop, wah. You do that over and over again, then you take a sharpie and pop, wah. Really fun. And you got, if you make the noise, it's the same thing, like pop, wah, pop, pop. It, it comes out perfect. <laughs> uh, reason I like this armor, I love, no, I added this, this is my own little interpretation, but I took this bevel and instead of stopping it here, I got that bevel, I continued it the entire way up here. Oh, it looks so good coming around that edge and it just blends out right inside here. Uh, there's a bevel inside here as well. I just wanna add a little convex, I add a little panel here, just so it, it's a better separation from the gold and white. Uh, and that's my Resurrection F. This is tailored to somebody. He's a little bit larger than I am. I could put this on. Actually, I can't fit this on. But it's a, it's bigger than, a, than me. But I can show you. Actually, I haven't put this on yet. Oop, there's my glass. I can show you roughly what this looks like on a person. Find my buckle, click. It's a, it's a little bigger than, than I would be, but you know, on the body. Like for me, I'd probably have it like this tight and I'd probably have these a little bit tighter for, for, my, for my shape. Uh, for him, this is perfect. It looks really good on him. He came and personally got fitted in my studio. So, I pop them off, I just whoop, like this. Just like Jim Carrey out of Rhino's butt. All right, there you go, okay, so. Put my eyes back on, I'm blind to the back. I'm gonna put this back. So he's gonna be picking that up this week. I uh, just got on the phone with him yesterday. He said he's gonna come out and get it. Um, yeah, I like making the resurrection of, and that's actually on my website right now. Um, there is, there's something about this is this is my preferred ways. I want people to make. Here is a female client who made a duct tape body cast. Now I have to stuff this, but once it's stuffed. Um, this is this person's size and shape to a T. They wrap themselves in the, in the duct tape and that duct tape will hold that form around that person's shape and size. And once I stuff it, I know where the, the chest level is, where their belly comes to an end. You know, it, it helps in the creation. So somebody can make this, fold it up, and send it into my studio. Um, it's so much easier tailoring. And that's how I made this guy. This is cut and shaped for the client. Uh, he's a taller guy, he's more lanky and stuff, so I kind of squeezed the shape, drew it out a little bit longer so it looked right on him, not just have it like scrunched in one area. So this is this is this was really tricky to create and it's super light, very strong, really durable stuff. Alright, I think we are dry. I'm gonna dust a little heat on this and then we'll put this together. gonna accelerate that glue put a little hot air I don't want to put a lot of hot air on it though just a little bit and here we go we're gonna put this together the other side <laughs> Not. 
tour. I'm gonna go get some duct tape. There you have it, my friends. We've just made a Cell Saga base. You saw this from the very beginning to end, right here live. Like I said before, there's little tailoring spots I need to cut. Just like this bottom here, I needed to just shim that off there, get that good line. But now we got it. Like, there's so much more work involved with this type of, you know, going through each panel, making sure each panel is convex and looking really good. But when it comes together, my friends, it makes something amazing. Amazing, and I'm so happy, and I feel good I did all that hard work. So this is what we're moving to next step, my friends. When I'm coming back, and I will be back here to live stream, we're gonna be putting the buckle in. The buckle's probably already gonna be in, but we're gonna do the trimming phase. This is where we apply all this round trim on here, and then once the trim's on there, we go through the seam sealer. So I break out this gun, and we do some crazy gnarly stuff with that. And once that's dry, we break out the rubber coating. And once we get the rubber coating on, we break out the painting phase. So there's so many phases, just one set of armor. It takes me a long time to make sure it's done right. So thank you guys for joining me today. I really appreciate your likes, your views. We've created something that went from this absolute flat nothing into this. Thank you for joining me, my friends. If you wish, go ahead and check out the description above. Check out the link, um, intergalacticcreations.com. If you wish to check out the prices of my armors, go ahead and go there. Uh, please do send me an email and ask about current wait times as it is going into 2018. So if you have an event next week, I'm so sorry, I will not be able to make them that fast. Um, you can follow me on Instagram where I will be sharing more of the Saiyan pod build if you want to see that Saiyan pod. In fact, come join me right now. We're going to do something a little crazy I wasn't expecting to do, but we're doing it. Let's go. We're moving. One to one scale Saiyan pod. Okay. All right, hold on, hold on. Ugh. There's the door. There's the door, because the door goes onto the Saiyan pod. This is the pod right now. I have it up on some stands, but it's gonna be getting uh, complete very soon. Wow, look at that beautiful day out. In fact, that's what I'm gonna do right now. Thank you guys for joining. I had a great time building that Cell Saga for you guys. I'm walking through my house, blah, blah, blah. Thanks for joining me in my studio today, my friends. I hope you come back 
for my other live feeds. You can view all my other live feeds um, on Lord Beerus, which is Facebook slash Lord Destructor. Go and check those out. Check it out, guys. Thank you all. Love you. Bye-bye.